In case you didn't know, you can't use the app storage with Observable when using the Observation Framework. Now, this might be a bit doo-doo, but have I ever let you down? <laughs> In this video, we're going to look at how we can build this language switcher that saves the language that you've selected in user defaults used within the observation framework. So we'll see how to create our own custom observable properties here in this free observation course here on my channel. And feel free to check out the rest of this course and the source code down below. Let's get this money. Now looking at our project here, you can see that we actually have our language and we can choose a language and it basically changes the wording from hello world to different languages. So if your language is listed here, leave a comment down below because I'm actually curious to see like if I got your language right. And if I didn't include your language, let me know you say hello world in your language because I want to learn more languages. You know, I'm trying to step up my Duolingo game. <laughs> but one of the nice things that we're using in this project is we're actually using the new strings catalog. So if I go to the strings catalog, we actually have the placeholder here for each language. And we're using that to dictate, you know, what hello world is in that language. So this language switcher that I put in this project is actually something you could easily add into your projects. And, you know, it's a nice way to allow users to switch languages if you need to do that within your actual app. Now, if we wanted to, because right now, if I run this project on the simulator, it won't actually persist the language, you know, you know, in some kind of storage, you relaunch the app and then you can access that language again. If you wanted to, you could use Swift Data and I do have Swift Data um, videos on my channel with this free playlist course that you can see on the screen here. But what we're going to do is actually use user defaults because this is just a lightweight key that we just need to save and use the defaults for our app. Now, the first thing that we're actually going to need to do is in our project, we have this file here called a language manager. And this is essentially our source of truth for storing what language someone has selected within our you know, app for our project. So I go in our language manager, you'll see it's already been migrated over to the observation framework and it's just storing the key for what was selected. But one thing, if you didn't know this, is you can't actually use app storage with the observation framework. Instead, you have to build your own custom observable property, which is what we'll look into next. So let's just type out the skeleton for this. And this is actually a computer property. So we need to create a getter and a setter. And within those two, write our own custom code for handling this. So I'll do this now. Now, I've added this in and we go up a whole bunch of errors, which is completely expected. Throughout this video, we're actually going to tackle these errors and put in the correct code. Now, if you're enjoying this video so far, I'd actually love to hear your feedback in the comment section down below. And as well, if you was to share this video, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for updates so that you receive updates whenever I release a brand new video. And if you want to access this code as well, so you can add this into your apps and have it as a template, the link is down below in gumroad so you can access it as well so the first thing we need to do is actually access user defaults and actually store this within there as well so i'm just going to create some keys within this class so we can easily work with user defaults so we'll add it to the top here so a good habit that i like to do is i like to use the bundle identifier as a unique identifier for what it is that we're going to be storing in user defaults and you might have noticed that i called this selected locale and the reason being is because what we're actually going to be doing in our project is actually changing the locale so the so the language reflects what's in our strings catalog so we're saving a locale which is a key now in our set we need to actually access this computer property and then access the new value and then store that in user default so i'll type that out and we'll break it down so you can see here in our set, we're accessing the property on the key path. And then we just say to user defaults to save the new values, raw value for this key here. And if you want to see what this raw value actually looks like, if I go to my model for all the languages that I have, so I'll just go to my language model. You'll see that in our enum, we have all of the keys for each one of the languages. So these are the keys that we're going to be saving. And these are actual locales for different languages. And you can see down below, we've got all the emojis we want to show on the screen here and the colors as well. So you can build on top of this if you were to add this to your application. Now, I'll just go back and within our get, we now want to write code to basically fetch the value from user defaults. And if there isn't one, provide some kind of default, which we'll add in now. So you can see here, we're accessing the key path which um, is on our property. And then we're going to get the value from user defaults map that to our enum using the key from the user defaults to our enum and if we can get successfully get a language we'll then return 
that language to show onto the UI or else we'll just return the first case in our Eden, which will be our default. So we'll handle our default here. So let's just test this out and see what happens. So I'm going to run this on an iPhone 15. So you can see here that we have German selected. So I'm just going to change this to French. And you can see now it says bonjour le monde. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm learning French, bro. <laughs> so if I was to now just basically refresh and just, you know, rerun this app to see if it's actually persisted what's in user defaults, you'll see that it's actually loading up French, as you can see here. Now, I will give you a word of warning here and something that I realize that sometimes it can happen is that when you're doing this technique and you're trying to save to user defaults with the new observation framework, there can be a slight delay in terms of it committing these changes. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're wanting to follow this technique is that it sometimes isn't always almost instant. Um, so you might have to wait a couple of seconds for user defaults to actually catch up and persist those changes. So that's everything in this video. As you can see, I've covered a whole lot in this course as well. And there's gonna be more videos that come. I really appreciate it if you actually shared this playlist with other people so they can, you know, get their apps up to speed with observation framework. And you like this video and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get deuces.